What a journey we have been on with these Israelites. Wow. We know that they were slaves in Egypt and they left and went out through that Red Sea, led by God, by that pillar of fire, out into that wilderness. And there they, um, he, he turned those bitter waters sweet. He gave them manna from heaven to eat. He provided water uh, from out of the rock. And then they arrived at Mount Sinai and Moses went up the mountain and he received those Ten Commandments. And do you remember down at the bottom of the mountain, there was trouble. Uh, the people uh, were tired of waiting for Moses and they made that golden calf and they worshipped it. Their hearts turned away from God. And then Moses came down the mountain. He was angry with them and he broke those tablets and he ground up that golden calf and made them drink the water where he'd put the powder. Um, and then he had to go back up the mountain and receive the those commandments again and then God spoke to him and said the people need to make me a sacred tent a special holy tent and they he showed Moses how to make it um, and and God had said to Moses I want you to make this because I want to come down and live among the people and in that tent there would be a place called the holy place and then there would be a most holy place we're there in that incredibly special place by that above that golden box between those angels God would come down and the people gave all their things all their um, materials and their gold and their silver that the Egyptians had given them and they made that tent and all the things to go in it and then Moses said the tent up and the whole um, camp was based all around that tent. God was in the middle of the children of Israel and as he came down among them um, the Bible says that Moses couldn't even go down into the couldn't go into the tent because God had come down and he'd filled the whole tent with his presence and we talked about how God doesn't live in sacred tents anymore but he lives instead inside our hearts that we're the temple of the living God that Jesus has knocked upon the door of our hearts and come in and he wants our hearts to be the sacred tent now and so the people then traveled on with God among them out into that wilderness for many years they traveled and they reached in the end an area called Eden. They'd been traveling for so long that the Bible says the people were tired. They were discouraged. Some of the versions say they were depressed. They were impatient. They were fed up. Have you ever felt like that? The Bible says it was because of the trials they were going through. And they began to complain again. They were angry. They were angry with God and with Moses. They said to Moses, it was better in Egypt. It was much better back then. We don't have water here. That wasn't true because they did have water. We don't have bread here. That wasn't true because God was providing it. And because they didn't like the situation, they forgot all that God was doing for them. The water from the rock, the bread, the manna from heaven. Their clothes didn't wear out. Their shoes didn't wear out. They didn't get sick. God was protecting them they forgot all about this and they just became very angry they spoke against God and against Moses they blamed God and Moses we can be like this remember complaining is linked to blaming why has God allowed this is what we sometimes say why has God done this to me it's all his fault we blame other people we blame God and that's what they did and their complaints went further in the end they said we we loathe we don't like even we hate this miserable food they were talking about the manna from heaven it was the most terrible thing to say and God was angry with them and the Bible says he sent fiery serpents fiery snakes into the tent to bite them and the people became sick and many of them died and so they rushed to Moses and they said God is killing people in the camp through these snakes we've sinned we've spoken against you and we've spoken against God pray for us that he'll take the snakes away and so Moses prays and he cries out to God and God says take a pole and onto it um, make a bronze serpent and wrap it round the pole and then raise it up in the camp and then he said, if the people come and just look at it, they will be healed. And so the people began to come and they looked and they were healed and they didn't die. It was an incredible picture that hundreds and hundreds of years later, Jesus himself would be like that serpent raised up on the cross and that by our faith in him, we would be rescued. He himself said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man will be lifted up. God was full of compassion. God's mercy is great.
And I was reading this story this week and I was reading another story as well. And it was like an opposite to this story. It was about a woman who was born in America, in New York, about 201 years ago. That's a long time ago. And she was really the opposite of these complaining Israelites. Here's a picture of her. Her name was Fanny Crosby. And when she was a tiny baby, she caught an infection. And the parents got her parents got a doctor, but he wasn't a real doctor. And he gave her some strange ointment and they rubbed it into her eyes. And as a result of this, she lost her sight and became completely blind. Then a few months later, her father died and her mother had to go out to work as a maid. And she was brought up, this little girl, by her Christian grandmother. And then something very good happened. Her grandmother taught her about Jesus. At a very young age, she gave her life to Jesus and he began to fill her heart. She spoke of feeling intense happiness, of her soul and her life being flooded with joy. She couldn't see anything and her world was completely dark, but this light was filling her heart. You see, the Bible tells us that as well as these physical eyes that we have, we've got eyes in, her, in our hearts. And Fanny Crosby's earthly eyes, her physical eyes, were closed. But God was opening her spiritual eyes, perhaps in a special way. And she gazed into the eternal world and she saw Jesus and she saw his glory. She wrote about visions of rapture, visions of wonderful things filling her sight. And then age eight, she made an extraordinary decision. She decided that for the rest of her life, she wasn't going to be bitter towards God. She wasn't going to be bitter towards her parents or towards this man about being blind. She wasn't going to complain about it or blame anyone. She could have been angry with God. Why had he allowed her to become blind? She could have been angry with her parents. Why didn't they check that this was a real doctor? She could have been angry with that man. If anyone had something to complain about or to be angry about, it was her. But this extraordinary decision that she makes when she's just eight changed her whole life and set her on an amazing path. I think if she hadn't have made that decision, she would have lived a sad and an angry life. But instead, she makes this brilliant decision. And age eight, she writes a poem to mark this. And she wrote this. Oh, what a happy soul am I, although I cannot see. I am resolved that in this world contented I will be. How many blessings I enjoy that other people don't. To weep and sigh because I'm blind, I cannot and I won't. And then God showed her something very wonderful, that the first face she would ever see would be the face of Jesus, that one day when she died, her sight would be given to her and she would see Jesus in heaven. And she began to tell people, do you know that the first face that will ever gladden my sight will be the face of Jesus, my saviour? And so she began to write. She could only do this in her mind. Someone else would have to write down the words for her. Um, incredibly, she could only ever write her name. From age 10, she began to learn five chapters. We're trying to learn one psalm. She was learning five chapters of the Bible a week. And by the age of 15, she had learned the first five books of the Bible the four Gospels in the New Testament and many Psalms. Perhaps because of her lack of sight, she had an extraordinary ability to remember passages from the Bible. She was also extremely musical. She played several instruments. She grew up to become a teacher, a speaker, a famous hymn writer and a campaigner. She campaigned for better education for blind children and she was the first ever woman to speak in the US Senate and to address a joint session of Congress. She worked tirelessly in city missions among the poor and the destitute, particularly in her later years, having rededicated her life to God. Age 60, she was most famous as a prolific writer of poems and hymns. She wrote over 8,000 hymns, many of which are still sung today. It's estimated the books containing her hymns have sold over a 100 million copies worldwide. In fact, she wrote so many hymns that she had to use other names as many of the hymnals contained her name so many times that publishers asked her to write under different names. She had up to 200 names that she wrote under. 
famous American evangelists Moody and Sankey attributed much of the success of their worldwide missions to the spiritual hymns of Fanny Crosby, who they knew well and worked with for many years. She gave away much of what she earned through her hymn writing. Her hymns are full of feelings and they describe amazing spiritual meetings with God. They speak of an intense love of Jesus and experience in her heart. She wrote Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. She's talking about an experience of God in her heart. One of her most famous hymns was To God Be the Glory, Great Things He Has Done, So Loved He the World That He Gave Us His Son, Who Yielded His Life and Atonement from Sin and Opened the Life Gate That All May Go In. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear His voice. Her hymns are full of complete wonder and astonishment at Calvary, that Jesus had died for her and for the whole world. She wrote, I am thine, O Lord, I have heard your voice, and it spoke of your love to me, and I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where you have died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to your precious bleeding side. She wrote, Jesus, keep me near the cross, there a precious fountain, free to all, a healing stream flows from Calvary's mountain. She said, take the world, but give me Jesus. In his cross my trust shall be, till with clearer, brighter vision, face to face, my Lord, I see. She was still writing up until her 94th birthday. The final words she wrote were, You will reach the river in the sweet, sweet by and by. By river they meant the end of their lives. She was nearly 95 when she died. Very unusual to live so long in those days. She'd finally reached the river. She'd had to wait a long time to see that first sight, the face of God himself. She could have gone down the road the Israelites did of being angry and bitter and complaining. But she lifted up her heart, didn't she, to Jesus. She found in him the greatest happiness and the only true satisfaction that can be found. I want to walk in Fanny Crosby's footsteps. I want the eyes of my heart to be opened like her eyes were opened to see Jesus. I don't want to walk in the footsteps of these complaining ones in the wilderness. What a challenge. What a challenge for all of us. Let's pray. Lord, we pray Fanny Crosby's prayer, Lord. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There a precious fountain, free to all a healing stream. Father, we want to know about this healing stream in our own hearts, Lord. We pray, would you help us? Would you help us not to complain? Would you help us not to be angry? Would you do something wonderful in our hearts? Amen. Amen. Okay, a quick quiz. Three questions. What did the people, the children of Israel, say that they hated? They said they hated something. What did God send into the camp? And what did the people have to do with the snake on the pole? First answer, they said they hated the manna. They said they hated the manna. What did God send into the camp? Fiery serpents. And what did they have to do with the snake and the pole? All they had to do was look. I hope you got them all right again. <laughs>